So in this episode, I'd like to use our rocket animation code to model a real life rocket. Um, I've pulled the information about the Saturn V rocket from Wikipedia, where I've got the uh, dry mass for each rocket, and then the total mass for each rocket stage. Of course, my code wants the fuel mass, so that's just the gross mass minus the dry mass. Um, Wikipedia gives you the burn time for each of the rocket stages, which I use down here to calculate the M dot for each rocket. So that's just the mass divided by the burn time. So this is assuming a, a constant M dot. It's probably not really constant, but it's a decent approximation to make. Then Wikipedia gives you the thrust for each stage of the rocket. These are measured in newtons. So this is 35.1 mega newtons, uh, 5.14 mega newtons, and one mega newton down here. And so to get the exhaust velocity, uh, thrust is nice for giving the, the rocket statistics, but for the Euler-Cromer method, you need the exhaust velocity. And so to get that, we just take the thrust value for that stage divided by the M dot value for that stage. And so I have these three blocks of information for the three stages. As you can tell, they are big numbers, right? Because we're talking about uh, a big rocket. I, I think the biggest rocket we've ever launched. Maybe, maybe we've had bigger since then, but all the charts I saw had it as, as taller than the other rockets it was compared to. And so I've had to set up my rocket loop uh, three times. Uh, here is the first loop for the first part of the rocket. Um, it's like you've seen in the previous video, so uh, you know I'm not going to spend too much time on that. Uh, one thing I will point out, when we get the external force, we have to do the full-fledged gravitational force coming from the Earth. So here we have the radius of the Earth a negative six million meters beneath where the rocket is launching. We have the Earth's mass almost six times 10 to the 24th. And then we have the real world gravitational constant 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11. So we are dealing with some rather extreme numbers in this code, but GlowScript is able to handle them all. And if I come down to the end here, let me just skip down to the end. This is probably the longest code I've ever posted on this channel. Um, down here at the end, I'm gonna graph the position, the, the altitude of all three rocket stages so that we can see uh, the first two stages falling away when the third one separates. And I think that about covers everything we need to talk about for the code. Let's press control two to run. Okay, so here we start with the launch. The rocket, of course, quickly leaves sight of the display window. So we'll zoom in here. I'm also gonna try to get a little bit of a dramatic angle going on here. Now, the first burn time is supposed to be at 168 seconds. So we will be coming upon that shortly. And there we go, we have the stage two separation. And even though the, the distance between the red and the green curve doesn't look that big on the graph, you can tell from the animation that the stage one fell away very quickly. We're talking about very large distances, very hot top speeds here. In fact, GlowScript is having to deal with such huge numbers that the rocket itself is shaking in the animation, which is appropriate, right? That's what a rocket should be doing. The thing that I think is neat about this simulation is that if you watch the green curve, it looks almost like a straight line. I don't think it's technically straight. Let me hold up a, you can't see this, but let me hold up a ruler to my screen here. Yeah, it's pretty close to straight. Um, so the green, the green curve, the, the second stage is traveling at almost a constant velocity um, for actually a good chunk of its trajectory. And basically what's going on there is the force of thrust from the rocket is almost perfectly canceling the force of gravity on the rocket. Now the force of gravity is changing because we're getting farther away from the Earth, but the mass of the rocket is changing. And so those two uh, factors are canceling out or are decreasing at exactly, almost exactly the same rate so that the thing travels with almost a constant velocity. Let me check that again with my straight edge. Yeah, that's pretty close to uh, that's pretty close to a straight line. Of course, I'm not graphing the velocity. I'll leave that to the viewer to create a graph of the velocity versus time to see how uh, constant the velocity is. And at around 400 seconds, you see the stage one 
reach the peak of its travel, it's about to turn around and start to fall down. Of course, we can't see that in the animation. It is long gone and we are following stage two. Uh, the stage one is about to turn around and start falling back to the earth. Okay, so at around 450 seconds, the green curve is definitely starting to curve, so we've got some uh, non-constant velocity going on there. So the thrust is starting to win out more over the gravitational force. Then at 500 seconds, we are getting close to the time for the stage three separation. That should be occurring at about 530 seconds. So there we go, at 528 seconds, the third stage separates from the second stage. And we see the blue curve shoot off from the green curve. So this is the smallest, lightest piece of the rocket. Uh, the smallest, lightest stage uh, is now pushing up with a thrust of, how many Newtons was that? That was one million Newtons of thrust pushing this blue curve up. And there at about 650 seconds, we see the first stage land on the Earth. So for a while there, for a good 150 seconds, the three stages are separate and all in the air.
At about 850 seconds, you can see the second stage starting to turn around. Cool, and there's a little bit more burn time left, but I think we'll call it quits there. Uh, you can play around with this, put in other parameters, and see how high you get. Uh, you can also try creating a graph of the velocity versus time, get an idea of how fast these things are traveling. Um, as always, thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.